So you're looking to get into a cybersecurity analyst position. You want to become the Navy SEAL of SOC analysts? Who's going to carry the alerts in the logs? That's you, buddy. Well, listen up. This is a cybersecurity certificate tier list for cybersecurity analysts. And try saying that 10 times fast. And it's going to be a roadmap for you to get a job as fast as possible. You're getting a two for one video special. I'm going to go over all the worthwhile cybersecurity certificates that I've come across in job listings for cybersecurity analysts, as well as some that I felt worth mentioning. Then at the end, I'm going to lay out my recommended learning path to get you on the right track. So stick around until the end. Or you know, you could skip ahead and miss all the fun. And just like my last video that relied heavily on HR clout, I'm going to use a similar approach for these rankings. Because after all, the whole point of certificates and this channel is to help you land a cybersecurity job. So all you trolls lurking in the shadows can voice all your incorrect opinions in the comments now about how HR doesn't know anything, so it shouldn't matter. But for all of us who have applied to thousands upon thousands of jobs, we know how important having that eye candy on your resume is to land that first interview. That being said, rankings will be determined in accordance with the Mad Hat metrics. HR clout, AKA reputation, because a certificate is only as good as its reputation after all, learning content, as in how helpful is the content covered by their certificate in an actual security analyst job. And price, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. I will provide a I'm rich roadmap at the end for those of you where money is not an issue. The amount of people that complained about me including price in the equation in the last video is significantly more than zero. I felt like it went without saying, but even if a certificate teaches you more practical and helpful information than another, it still doesn't mean that the institution can charge you 10 times the amount of another certificate through what are essentially mandatory, very expensive classes. If a $300 certificate increases your odds of landing a job because job listings are consistently requiring them and asking for them, then maybe you don't need to fork over the eight Gs to pass a test that is entirely based off of what they teach in the courses. If it looks like a duck, swims like a duck, and quacks like a duck, then it's probably a money grab. But without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start with the most important certificates the fundamentals. While these won't necessarily do your resume any major favors, you do have to know everything that is covered in them. For simplicity's sake and everyone asking, Mad Hat, what do I do if I'm starting from zero? I'm going to provide two certificate paths with the Mad Hat stamp of approval on them. Now starting off, if you are a type A personality, a real go-getter, you will stop at nothing to get what you want. It's a security job or nothing for you. All right, Mr. Neesom, is it? Uh, what makes you a good fit for this job? What I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. If I don't get this job... I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. You drive in the fast lane. And the Google Cybersecurity Certificate into Security Plus is for you. The fast path aimed at avoiding help desk at all costs. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Yeah, you need to turn it on. Yeah, you, you do know how a button works, don't you? Now, if you're a type B personality, like me, someone who pukes at the thought of public speaking <laughs> and shudders at the thought of sliding into a hiring manager's DMs, <laughs> then you might be better off going into the A+, into Network Plus, into Security Plus. The slow path. This way you also stand a better chance landing a help desk job to ease your way into the industry. Since help desk holds A Plus in a very high regard. Think of the Google cert as a TLDR version of the A Plus and Network Plus combined. It's brief, but with a type A personality, you'll undoubtedly find a way to fill in the holes because you're driven. So, what personality are you? This might go without saying, but both of these paths are S tier, approved by me. And just to be 100% clear, both paths aim at accomplishing the same thing. However, the A plus and network plus combined cost an $850 to obtain. Whereas the Google cybersecurity certificate is essentially free via Coursera if you apply for the financial aid option, or you could do the $49 a month subscription that also gives you access to every other course on their platform. Can you handle the fast path? But Mad Hat, is that the only way to learn the fundamentals? Nope, there's lots of ways of getting the basics in. College, this puts the mental in fundamentals because you'd have to be mental to spend this amount of money just to learn the basics. It's by far the most expensive way of learning the basics and it's spread across multiple years. Sure, it's more hands-on, but if I was being honest with myself, my many years spent in college would have been better spent doing help desk while I focused on certifications. It's a B tier for college. I bet you didn't see that certificate coming, eh? Boot camps are next. Now I won't pick out anyone in particular because there's a crap ton of them out there, but generally speaking, if the bootcamp does not provide any vouchers or training 
training for any notable certifications and is purely for learning sake, then you don't really have much to show on your resume, unless the bootcamp is somehow known by where you're applying to. And I don't know how many job listings y'all have seen, but I ain't never seen no bootcamps listed on them. Bootcamps are D for do your due diligence on them. They most probably suck and are riding the cybersecurity hype train and trying to get a piece of that pie. But there are some I've seen that provide streamlined courses for various well-known cyber certs. Self-learning, if you plan on avoiding certifications, then you're crazy. But I know there's people out there who refuse to join the memory dump club and would rather pour concrete than cram for another exam. Well, Mad Hat's got all you folks covered. Hack the box and try Hack Me. These two platforms have made some serious waves in the cybersecurity community and they have made a name for themselves. So much so that pretty much everybody in the industry knows about them. Both sites regularly come out with new modules and courses where you can learn the basics in a gamified environment. It's actually possible to learn everything that you need to know by completing the rooms on either of the sites. However, it is not for the faint of heart and only the strongest of will. Try Hack Me has a dedicated SOC analyst module that I'm going to eventually go over in its entirety slowly but surely, and Hack the Box is working on theirs. So for once in our gaming lives, our rank can actually help us land a job. Boasting about your top 10 or 1% on the leaderboards can actually make your resume stand out. My boss got real excited when I said I was dabbling in Hack the Box, only to sound a bit disappointed when I said I hadn't done that much yet. The certificates of completion for each module are not as impressive as being on their leaderboards, but both of them do help on one's resume. So certificates of completion unfortunately are not gonna shine all that well on your resume. And taking the self-learning path is difficult. Therefore, D tier for difficult, but damn good for learning the basics. Now you won't see any job listings asking for hack the box or try hack me on them, but that's what the intermediate certs are for that are coming up. So I'm not going to go over the beginner certs again like I did in the last video. So you should know how I rank them. The certified cybersecurity is an F tier still. ITIL Foundations is still a D. And aside from those, these are your options for getting the fundamentals out of the way. Now we get into the meaty certificates. For the snowflakes in the comments who complain about me putting the OSCP on the same tier as Security Plus without actively listening to my justification of the tiers, I'll spare you the triggering site and leave the fundamental certificates out of this ranking. Now to no one's surprise, a lot of the certs I ranked in the last video are also good for cybersecurity analyst work. So we still have the CISSP at the S tier. I don't care what anyone says, who claims to know better than every bit of research I've done on forums, on job listings, my own experience talking to people in the industry, and of course, obtaining the certificate myself after I made that video. The concepts covered in the official study guide are all useful knowledge to have as a cybersecurity analyst. Now, it may cover a mile wide and an inch deep worth of knowledge in each domain. It still proves your understanding of core principles at an intermediate level beyond that of the Security Plus. Only people who complain about it, who've never studied or tried to get it themselves. You know who you are. Are. But I digress. We've got all these rankings. And if you want to see why I rank them that way, feel free to check out the previous video I made. If you have seen the video, feel free to skip ahead as I'm going to quickly go over them. The CASP Plus is B tier, as it's a lesser version of the CISSP, costing $492. If you're planning on getting your CISP Plus, you might as well just go for the CISSP. Now the CISA Plus is gaining steam and is gearing up to replace the Security Plus as far as the beginner fundamental cert for cybersecurity analysts, as it does go further into the weeds than the Security Plus into principles you do need to know as a security analyst, and it's being asked for more and more. However, for the time being, it is still below the Security Plus as far as priority of obtaining. Still C tier at $392. Pentest Plus is D tier still, as it doesn't come up much for security analyst job listings, and given the purpose of it is to prepare you for the red teaming concepts, there are better red teaming certs that I'll point out coming up shortly. Now, as far as ISACA certs, they came up often enough in job listings. They offer solid knowledge and at $760 still stay at the A tier. Now I covered the CEH and the OSCP as well, with both of these falling under penetration testing or red teaming certificates. Now, as I've said before, you do need to have basic understanding of red teaming principles, which is reflected in job listings that are asking for these two certificates. Now, OSCP is still A tier as it's more of a red teaming cert and we're talking about blue teaming here and it costs double the price of the CSSP at $1,500. The CEH is still C tier due to the poor reputation that does not seem to be improving. And at relatively the same pricing as the OSCP at $1,199, it's gonna stay where it's at. GX certificates. I've got some beef with these. As many have stated in the comments in the last video, the $949 pricing for the GX certificates does not include the essentially mandatory classes that are required for you to pass the exam. The reason you need their courses is because there's no available official study guide where there are exams that are tailored to what is taught in these SANS 
courses. So you are forced into taking an extremely expensive class before paying for the $949 exams. The tests are open book, so you can reference your notes. They have options to access practice tests that are essentially the same questions on the test, which should you memorize, could greatly improve your odds of passing the test. All that being said, anyone ranking the GX certificates over the CISSP or the OSCP is out of their goddamn mind. Yes, they're very well respected. Yes, you do learn a lot from the courses, but the exams are almost a certificate of completion more than an achievement. In that regard, GX certs are more akin to a college degree than they are to traditional certificates. So for all those reasons, GX certs are going to remain a B until either SANS courses can become more accessible and affordable for the general population or official study guides are released so you can self-study for the exams. Also, <laughs> The CISSP is not an open book exam. Would I attend a SANS course if my work paid for it and proceed to take every GIAC exam that applied to it? You bet your ass I would. But I'm not ever going to pay for that shit out of pocket. This leaves Blue Team Level 1, which I ranked previously as a D tier, since no one knows about it that much yet. However, I do still highly recommend it for learning purposes, as I will explain later on in the video how this fits in. Now time for some certs that I have not mentioned before, starting with the highly requested Hack the Box Academy Certified Penetration Testing Specialist, the CPTS. <laughs> This one takes the cake as far as practical skills. Yoink. I think my boss would actually congratulate me if I was able to obtain this one. Albeit he's clearly in favor of the more hacking centric certificates. You're going to find a lot of SOC analysts and security analyst positions asking for red team based certificates. That's largely in part due to the nature of the job, which requires you to have a, at least a basic understanding of how the bad guys are going to break into your environment, which then allows you to properly defend it. At $490, this one is worth proving your knowledge to hiring managers that think like my boss. It's still not being asked for for any job listings that I pulled. However, the knowledge you gain from the certificate will not only impress the hiring managers, but is far more practical than the CEH. And if you can get on the leaderboards of Hack the Box, and get this sir you are setting yourself up for one impressive interview this one's a b tier as it's similar to the oscp and testing style requires extensive knowledge of penetration testing tactics and if it was being asked for more in job listings then i would have bumped it up to an a tier for sure however for learning sake it is one of the best red teaming certificates available right now any other red teaming certificates that i haven't covered up till now are not going to be very well known by the hr gurus so the following certificates are purely for learning sake so they're not gonna be doing much for that sweet HR clout. EJPT and TCM Securities PJPT. It's no secret that these do not show up on job listings. However, similar to the blue teaming level one cert, they offer far more practical hands-on testing that provides a better learning experience for, for learning how to do the day-to-day -day actual work. Now, both of these are junior level certificates. The EJPT is $249. This includes three months worth of fundamental access to the courses. If you need longer than that to study, then you'll have to pay more in monthly and quarterly subscription fees at $39 a month. The PJPT is $200 and this includes training as well. Now, in my opinion, both of these platforms offer similar teaching and are both great ways of obtaining hands-on experience. Now, eLearn Security or INE Security, whatever you want to call it, is a bit more well-established, but both institutions are making waves in the wow. cyber community. Now, as far as I've seen and read and researched, the PJPT beats EJPT slightly as far as exam format, but they're still on the same tier as each other. They can be considered the red teaming jam to the blue team level one's peanut butter. They make a damn good PB&J sandwich at the D tier. Now, both platforms offer more intermediate red teaming certificates. eLearn Securities ECPPT at $400 and TCM Securities PNPT at $400. Naturally, both of these I have to rank higher than their junior counterparts and the blue team level one cert as they're more difficult and provide the hands-on training testing as well. But as current reputation stands for both, the general consensus I've seen online is, is that the PNPT is more difficult. Therefore, I will classify it as a B tier, slightly below the Hack the Boxes CPTS, but a above the ECPPT at C tier. Now that's it for red teaming certificates I think are worthwhile mentioning for cybersecurity analysts. You need to have some knowledge on the hacking front to really round out your knowledge. Now a couple more special mentions that more relate to blue teaming, Cisco Cyber Ops Associate Certificate. Cisco's very well known in networking based jobs. However, in cybersecurity analyst jobs, it's rarely referenced. However, it does contain security analyst concepts 
and prepares you as well, if not better, than the CISA Plus. And at $300, the Cyber Ops sits next to the CISA Plus in the C tier for being a tiny bit more bang for your buck, with the CISA Plus being a tiny bit more well known. Now, vendor specific certifications like Palo Alto, Splunk, AWS, Azure, etc., these are not going to get you very far as the other mentioned certificates. Vendor certificates are more beneficial to when you've already landed a job and you already know what type of tools that you'll be working with, or if you know what type of vendor you want to work with eventually. So for that reason, vendor specific certs are F tier for general cybersecurity analyst jobs, generally speaking. Now, if you've watched up till now, you might have an idea of what the Mad Hat Master Path Roadmap to Cybersecurity Analyst is. To battle! Now, depending on what personality type you are, you can pick one of the two S tier fundamental paths, then start working towards your CISA Plus or Cyber Ops, your choice. Right around this junction, you'll want to start applying for jobs. This includes help desk jobs. Basically, any tech job you can get your hands on because experience is king and the certificates are the queen telling the king what to do. Now, once that's completed, you'll want to start working towards your blue team level one to gain some invaluable hands-on experience to really apply the theories and principles that you've learned up till now. This is arguably the best hands-on incident response security analyst certificate available for a semi-reasonable price. Now, I would love to replace the blue team level one with the GSOC or the GCIH, but I can't in good conscience recommend to the mass to spend that kind of money towards a certificate. But if you're rich or you have someone else who can pay for it, like a help desk job, then GX certs obviously trump blue team level one. Now at this point, you're primed and you're ready for the fun stuff, <laughs> breaking into things. Hack the box, here we come. Because you'll want to pick up the CPTS. You're more than welcome to attempt some of the rooms in hack the box along your journey of certs. However, the more that you already know going into these rooms is going to help you complete the rooms quicker and easier, which will then help you prepare for the CPTS. Now the CPTS takes the place of the EJPT and the PJPT. PPTPPCGP, there's so many acronyms, holy it's superior in every way. And again, like I've stated before, the purpose of getting a red teaming certificate is to round out your knowledge and general best security practices. And now you want to learn about everything you have to look out for. Now, at this point, you really know your stuff and are ready to tackle some advanced certificates. You should already be on the leaderboard on Hack the Box or Try Hack Me so you can flex on your resume as well as having a copious amount of cybersecurity projects to show on your resume. Check out my projects video if you haven't already. Keep in mind that you should continuously be applying for jobs until you've landed that entry level security analyst position. Now you wanna set your sights on the OSCP. This is a beefier and obviously more well-known red teaming certificate that proves that you know how to break into a company. So you're obviously apt to investigate malicious activity because you know what it looks like. As you can see here, OSCP is way up here with CPTS floating around the middle to give you an idea of the jump in difficulty. If at this point you still find yourself unable to find a job, your resume might be shit, just to be frank. What are you doing with your life? I've seen countless posts on forums complaining about obtaining countless credentials and not being able to land interviews, much less a job after thousands of job applications. To provide some perspective on my Mad Hat Master Path, I would classify everything learned below the CISA Plus as everything covered in my bachelor's degree, which is sad considering it took me over four years to obtain my bachelor's certificate. And these three certificates can be obtained in as little as three months with proper studying, of course. Now I know everyone is different, but that is some stark reality for the state of college right now. There's too many filler classes that too many people are arguing expands your mind. I just want a cybersecurity job. Anyways, after OSCP is of course the CISSP. Ideally, you will have already landed a tech job to work towards the four years requirement for the certificate. And notice I said four years and not five years because the previous certificates will knock off one year of the five year requirement. Now at this point, you've got quite the portfolio of certificates and projects and can just apply frantically until you land the job of your dreams. Now, cybersecurity is not some get rich quick scheme. It's a booming field with an incredibly high demand, a high bar to entry, but comes with a high salary range. So it's worth it, I hope, because I've got all my eggs in this basket and you have to do the same. Just as I've said before, ad nauseum, you have to be all in on cybersecurity. So are you all in? <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Good luck out there.